A couple of video go, uh, a couple of video ago, a couple of videos ago, there we go, plural. Anyway, I reported that we're seeing leaks from fairly reliable sources of AMD's top end GPU hitting 92 teraflops. And we've also seen some indication that maybe Nvidia's top spec is gonna be 100 teraflops, but in the last couple of days, we've seen more leaks from also reliable-ish, you know, their, their leakers, <laughs> sources, showing that AMD's rumored specifications have been cut down quite a bit compared to the, you know, previous rumors, but that performance targets haven't changed and something doesn't seem right about all of this. So I'm gonna give you guys the details, some of my thoughts on it, and then probably wrap up with my thoughts on should you be waiting for these new GPUs? Should you be buying now? All of that kind of stuff. Like, is AMD going to compete in the next gen? Uh, we'll see what I have time for at the end of the video before I have to leave for work. But anyway, I'm seeing this reported at Video Cards. There's also some articles about it over here at um, WCCF Tech. By the way, just getting a, an idea on the, the rumored floating point operation specs, WCCF Tech put it in a graph and you can see why those numbers are so crazy. Now it's important to keep in mind that floating point operations do not just directly one-to-one -one translate to gaming performance but it is a ballpark way of measuring the um, you know, total power, compute power of a GPU. Again, it can't always directly translate to gaming. But if you look at, you know, the PlayStation 5 is 10.2. <laughs> the Series X is 12.1. The 6900 XT is 25, and the 3090 Ti is 40. These rumored specs of getting a 92 teraflop and maybe 100 teraflop GPU, I mean, you can see the massive jump here compared to like the 6900 XT and compared to uh, current gen consoles, even more than doubling the 3090 Ti. It's pretty crazy to see these numbers, but it's also crazy to expect this number if the leak we're seeing here is actually true because um, we'd been seeing the rumors in core count on the top end Navi 31 die being 15,360. That had been the previous rumor. But in this leak we're seeing here, it's being listed at 12,288. Now that's still a big number and would provide good performance, but that is obviously cut down from what we were seeing by 20%. We're also seeing Navi 32 listed at 10,240. Sorry, sorry, it used to be 10,240 was the rumor, but is now being listed here at 8,192. But the 31 die, uh, sorry, not the 31 die, it looks like the 33 die is where we expected it to be at 4,096. Now, this is being tweeted here by Redfire, but then Greymon seems to be repeating it and reacting to it with a, hmm. Now, is, is that confirmation? He's replying to 3D Center tweeting about these same specs. And Graymon's saying this is a change of 31 and 32, 33 maintain original specifications. So here he doesn't have the little hmm face. <laughs> and again, why would we care what a Digimon has to say? Uh, well, if you hadn't watched the other video, Graymon is a reliable leaker here. And, and 3D Center is saying, thanks Graymon. So it's like from Graymon. And Graymon has, again, leaked things reliably in the past which is why we would care more about him than any other random Digimon tweeting, tweeting things. <laughs> now, in some of the other articles on this, um, well, no, I think it's right here. So this is the interesting thing. So if you actually take these specs on, on the new specs and go with the rumored three gigahertz clock speed number, this would indicate 73 teraflops, which is still a huge jump. But that's not the 92 teraflops that Greymon had just been tweeting about. And then again, I forget where I saw it. It might have been in this article somewhere. Um, but I believe there was a tweet from Greymon saying that he does not believe the performance targets have changed. Ah, unfortunately, it looks like I don't have it uh, pulled up right here uh, for you. 
But I also saw a tweet with him saying that, that he doesn't expect the performance targets to be changed, just the specs. But again, that's what's so confusing here, because at 3 gigahertz, that should be 73 teraflops. But he still seems to be saying 92 teraflops is the, is the target. Now, how would we get there? Well, by clocking higher than 3 gigahertz, how much higher? I think it would have to be up around 3 point, would that have to be around 3.7? I don't know, I don't want to get out of calculator or anything. Uh, but the point is, if it's true that these are still the specs and it's still targeting 92 teraflops, uh, that would indicate insane clock speeds. Or all of this could be nonsense. And like I said in my uh, previous video on the topic, you know, th this does remind me a lot of the kids on the playground when I was a kid saying their uncle works at Nintendo, so they have all the latest info. Although the, a lot of these leakers do end up getting things right on previous leaks and things like that, so we can't completely discount them. But this is a bit confusing. Now, um, <laughs> regarding specific performance targets other than teraflops, Copite has been another one of the kids who maybe his uncle really does work at Nintendo or has had things right in the past. Um, and he's saying that he uh, doesn't have much information about AMD. But this is where I think the 100 teraflops number is coming from for NVIDIA, because he's saying maybe Lisa and Jensen's competition will give us a 100 teraflops gaming war in a few months. Um, so it's hard to read into that whether that's specifically saying, yeah, NVIDIA does have 100 teraflops, but they're saying I don't have much information about AMD. Didn't say didn't have much information about NVIDIA, and then saying 100 teraflops right there. So, but again, that's a maybe. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know, guys. It's hard to say, uh, <laughs> you know, exactly how much of this to read into, but I, I guess I'm making a video about it, so whatever. Now, there's, uh, we also get Graham on saying, I can only say that the two products must have improved a lot compared to their predecessors, but if you want to ask me directly which one is better, I'm sorry I can't answer because no one knows the specific improvement by percentage, so we don't have specific percentage numbers. Anyway, uh, I'd like to give a little bit of thoughts on should you be waiting for these? Because with graphics card prices coming down now, I see a lot of comments on my channel like, oh, should I buy now? Should I wait? All of that. Well, in the past, new GPU generations generally launch with the higher end cards. And even forgetting about the 2020 launch, but especially with that one, we've generally seen limited supply and sometimes even scalped cards and things like that. Obviously 2020 being the worst example of that. So I think if the high-end cards launch first and have insane performance like this, first of all, I will expect some MSRP creep. So they're going to be expensive. I will also expect them to completely sell out and be scalped for quite a while would be my, <laughs> would be my guess. So if you're waiting till the end of the year, and then it could be a couple of months before they're, they're really available, and I think that's uh, a couple of months after the initial launch that they're really available anywhere near MSRP, and I think that could be optimistic. So if you're waiting on the high end, maybe. If, if you're trying to build now, I mean, l l like it could be worth waiting for that, but it, it will be a while. But if you're looking at buying in the mid-range to low end, you know, d did you see how long we had to wait to get the 3050, for example? Wasn't that like a year or more after the, the launch of the top-end Ampere cards? So I think if you're waiting on a new low-end card, I think you'll be waiting well over a year from now, if you are waiting. So whether that's worth it to you to save a little bit of money or maybe to get more a little bit more performance for your money, I don't know. That That's up to you and your decision. But I'm just saying if you're waiting on the lower end especially, and even mid-range, I think it could be quite a while. Um, high end, I think if you don't need something now, it does look like we're going to get a massive performance increase sometime in the next you know, six months or so. <laughs> um, but availability and pricing, eh. Now, what else did we have today? So we had a little bit about... Um, AMD's uh, feature set, their uh, VCN4, which is now being listed as Video Codec Next instead of Video Core Next, which is kind of interesting, uh, is still not listing AV1 encoding, which uh, since Intel GPUs do feature that, we, we could be seeing that growing in popularity and maybe being a little bit more important coming up. Now that doesn't mean they won't have it, but it's not currently listed, which is interesting. Um, and then we're also seeing a, uh, 
uh, what is this, the 6650 XT, we're seeing that there is a white version coming up, and we've also seen a black version, and Video Cards is still reporting we're expecting these 50 XT launches to come on May 10th, and again, you should expect a small, uh, small memory speed increase, maybe a small clock speed increase, a moderate uh, performance bump, but we don't know exactly for sure yet. Um, see, this is just the 100 teraflops rumor thing again, yeah. All right. So last thing I want to say, kind of, uh, this popped into my mind, but, but like feature set, and I was also thinking along the, the terms of pricing, is just, oh man, um, regardless of who takes this performance crown between the two, like AMD versus Nvidia, I think that might be kind of missing the point. Whether it's, you know, 100 teraflops versus 92 teraflops, um, you know, personally, I could care less which one actually has the absolute highest end flagship Halo product. I think what's going to matter a lot more is the pricing, okay, and the feature set. Because I feel like it was exciting with RDNA 2 that AMD was able to actually compete in rasterized performance at the high end. That was very exciting. But I thought their, their MSRP prices were not nearly aggressive enough given some of their um, feature set disadvantages versus their NVIDIA counterparts. Uh, with regards to ray tracing performance, which I know some people care about, especially on the higher end cards, for me that's not a big deal. But then with things like DLSS 2.x being very, very good, and we didn't get a real competitor to that, well, we really still don't have it. We're waiting on FSR 2.0. So I think one of the biggest things is going to be whether or not FSR 2.0 is really at least almost as good as DLSS 2.x to the point where you could use either one and not really notice the difference. That's going to be absolutely huge as well as the game support list for it. Because to me, DLSS was the standout feature, especially at higher resolutions like 4K um, and even 1440p. Uh, between the two brands. Uh, the ray tracing performance, personally, I didn't care much about with RDNA 2 versus Ampere, just because I feel like it's still too big of a performance hit uh, to be, you know, worth using. But if we get a significant jump in performance here with ray tracing turned on, especially from, from NVIDIA, if their ray tracing performance could double, now I don't know if it will, but if it could, then I think it would be absolutely usable. But the problem is that if AMD's ray tracing performance doubles, that's not catching up to what like a doubled NVIDIA ray tracing performance would be. So um, the point is, I think it's this next generation of GPUs where we could really see ray tracing be something more people will care about if you can get pretty solid frame rates while using it. So I don't know. I I'm really interested to see whether or not AMD can increase, first of all, can compete with DLSS with FSR 2.0, and then can compete on more of these feature sets uh, like ray tracing, because if they still can't, I do want to see their MSRPs targeted more aggressively. I think if GPUs had actually been widely available at MSRP with this current generation, there would have been a lot fewer people, myself included, buying AMD. Like I bought a 6800 XT as my main gaming GPU for most of this generation because it was significantly cheaper than a RTX 3080. But I did that because they weren't anywhere near their MSRPs, right? If they were sold at their MSRPs, I would have absolutely bought the 3080. Um, so I think if the chip shortage does start to get better here, and if supply, uh, you know, if, if the market is a bit more normal and cards are closer to their MSRPs, I just hope that AMD takes that into account and either does catch up in terms of all of the feature sets or prices things more aggressively. And I think that's much more important than whether or not we have, uh, which one has the absolute fastest GPU. Uh, because I have a feeling that Nvidia is not gonna let that go, even if they need to go to 900 watts on some kind of insane 4090 Ti in order to claim the, <laughs> the uh, you know, Halo product crown. Anyway, what do you guys think about all this? Let me know in the comment section and I hope you have an excellent day.